Welcome back. Paul Ryan has won praise from policy wonks for having actually produced a budget proposal. But does that help him or hurt him in this political campaign? We're joined now by Senator Ron Johnson, who, like Paul Ryan, is from Wisconsin, and like Paul Ryan, sits on the budget committee and has actually had to write budgets. And Senator, I want to start out by asking you that question. You know, I've been watching politics for three decades, and it seems to me that Republicans, until this election, have tried very hard to keep budget writers out of the, uh, off the national ticket, because a budget gives you something to shoot at. It gives you specific proposals that cause pain. Uh, you think it's going to be a plus this time around? I think so, because I think Americans are hungering for leadership, and they actually want elected officials to solve the problem. And what Paul Ryan has done is he's had the courage to put forward real proposals on the table for the American people to uh, evaluate. Republicans are willing to be held accountable, unlike President Obama, who has put forward four budgets. He has yet to submit a proposal to save either Social Security or Medicare. His last two budgets were so unserious. They've been voted on now three times in the United States Congress. The final vote tally, zero to 610. He can't even get members of his own party to vote for them. So no, I, I think just like in the state of Wisconsin, the voters reward uh, elected officials that have a little courage, and that is uh, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan. They're gonna re be rewarded for, for putting forward those, those bold plans. But, Senator, as you know, there are even Republican legislators who have walked away or at least uh, tried to put some distance between themselves and the Ryan budget plan. And Mitt Romney himself says, no, I'm not for the Ryan budget plan. I have my own budget plan. Well, sure, it is a framework, and, and it will be uh, President Romney's budget. But look at what they did uh, right after they named uh, Paul Ryan vice president uh, nominee. They immediately went on offense on Medicare and properly pointed out that it's President Obama that has actually looted Medicare to the tune of $716 billion to pay for his very partisan, very unpopular health care law. It's Paul Ryan and, and Mitt Romney that have a plan not to affect current beneficiaries or even people about to retire, but a plan to save Social Security for, for future generations. And again, I think that's a positive. But now you know what happens. You can see what's happening in this election campaign. You've got uh, uh, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan saying, we cannot tolerate any tax increases. You have the Democrats digging in their heels on, on uh, Medicare and other spending cuts. And at the end of the day, once we get past the election, aren't you going to have to have some of both? Some tax increase, some spending cuts in order to deal with this multi-trillion dollar budget deficit? Well, the, the good thing about electing Mitt Romney, he has a record, as does Paul Ryan, of reaching out across the island and working with the other party. Mitt Romney had to uh, work with a legislator that was 87 percent Democrat. I've been in the Senate now for 21 months when we've had divided government, and I would argue that President Obama has no working relationship, certainly not with Republicans, barely with any Democrats. So I just want the American public to take a look at why would they possibly think the next four years under this failed leadership would be anything different from the last two years of failed leadership? That's a very serious question the Americans need to ask themselves. Uh, Senator, we talked earlier today to Jared Bernstein, who's an economic advisor to the vice president. And we sure. asked him if he was in this debate, what would he ask Paul Ryan? I want you to listen to what he said and then give us your answer. I'd want to ask Representative Ryan why he believes that this trickle-down supply-side tax plan uh, that he and, and uh, Governor Romney are touting would work any differently than they have in the past vis-a-vis -vis the budget deficit. Uh, that's, that's easy to answer. The fact is when Ronald Reagan cut taxes, within a six-year time period, our federal revenue grew 67 percent. Even George Bush's tax cut, when enacted in 2003, federal revenue was a little under $1 trillion. Five years later, it was $2.5 trillion. It grew 42 percent. History shows us that when you cut taxes, when you actually incentivize the American economy to grow, it grows and you get new taxpayers. So you grow revenue for the federal government the old-fashioned way by growing our economy. That works. President Obama's plan simply hasn't. I have yet to see a tax increase that helps grow the economy or creates one job. They just have failed policies. They have a failed record. Uh, Senator, let's talk a little bit about Wisconsin, your home state, Paul Ryan's home state. It certainly looked like before the debate last week that that was still solidly in the Democrats' uh, camp. It's looking a little different now, isn't it? Well, Alan, I've always been cautiously optimistic. I mean, I won there two years ago, so did Scott Walker. What's changed? I ran on a platform to basically repeal this very unpopular health care law 
and the fact that we are bankrupting this nation, also basically running out on the difference between growing the government and our debt and growing the private sector. I mean, what's changed? We're two years closer to implementing that very unpopular health care law. We've added two and a half trillion dollars to our nation's debt. And basically, Governor Romney and Paul Ryan are, are offering Americans the exact same choice. Do we want to continue to grow the government and the burden on our debt, on our, of debt on our children's backs? Or do we want to concentrate on growing the private sector, which creates long-term self-standing jobs? I hope Americans choose the right path. Uh, Senator Johnson in Spin Alley in Danville, Kentucky, thanks very much for being with us.